people who are believing that they're in the wrong body, it's a it it's sucks. a it's a tragic thing it to sucks. be to be going I'm through, sure, yeah. and I wouldn't never I wouldn't ever go to their face and say you're not a woman. No, I wouldn't either. I don't say that. I do technically, obviously, think that you're not a woman if you right. have a penis right. or if you weren't born a woman. Right. However, I do wonder to myself what the best way to go about it is because with anything in life, you kind of want to meet someone where they are in a way. Right. And all of the best people throughout history have all been people who have been able to go to someone's level and talk to them and never be judgmental and looking down upon people. So it's one of those things where it's in our culture at the moment. There are some very extreme aspects of it. It's very disturbing in some ways, especially when it comes to children. Mm -hmm. But you don't really want to paint everyone with the same brush and you don't want to be cruel to people. Exactly. So That's why I, I say there's a lot of nuance to these conversations, but the, the main issue with all of this is that the majority of people on both sides, to be honest, I would say both sides besides the middle. <clears throat> Let's say there's three sides, there's this side, this side, and then the middle. The majority of people on both sides don't know how to speak to each other mm. anymore. And it is yeah. mostly coming from the left, if I'm if I'm being real, at least from what I've seen, I'm more able to have conversations. Like I went on I went on Steven Crowder's show. He's considered far right, even though he's not. He's really like a centrist, leaning conservative on certain issues. Yeah. But I went on his show. I've talked. I went on Candace Owens' show. If I went on a, a, a Libs show, they would eat me up. They would try to eat me alive. Mm. So there. I don't see any point in that. I like having conversations with liberals. I've got some like more liberal friends, and mm. I, actually, I actually really enjoy hanging out with people of the, the more sort of spiritual, esoteric types. I, I just mm. enjoy the conversations we have because our, our worldviews are quite opposed. Yeah, but yeah. I, I appreciate it, and but I they're good people. Yeah, exactly if, right. If they can listen. To, there's no ego there and, and you and you learn some stuff i think that the problem really happens when you have two diametrically opposed sides of the spectrum who nobody can't deal with each other nobody wants to move yeah. um and, it, but the thing is it's not about moving you can still have your view and, and hear theirs exactly you don't have to change your view you, you just should be able to speak about it and i do think that there's something to be said about having your castle having your worldview there's nothing wrong with having your worldview unless it's obviously right. nuts right but if you've got a reasonably sane worldview and then you have the motive tolerance on the outside where you can still interact with people and you don't think oh they've got an opinion that i don't like i'm not gonna just for, chill out it's not that deep right you can have conversations with people but i think that that's where we stumble a lot of the time and that's where conversations are very necessary because otherwise people are gonna think oh trans person they must want to chop my kid's dick off right no not necessarily. Right, exactly. They're probably decent people. The one thing that I would say, though, about the trans issue is that I do fear that we're, we're not really getting to the nucleus of the issue as to why people are feeling this way and why people are going towards these drastic measures. Is there something that's a very uncomfortable conversation that needs to be had? 100%. In terms of what is making, is it is it some sort of a big cultural force? No, we it's mental about health. TikTok? It's mental health. Mental health? Yes. Because when I see that, I think that, gosh, there has to be some sort of self-loathing that's happening there. Well, think about this. Let's compare just for a second transgenderism, not transsexualism. Hmm. Transgenderism to anorexia. Because it is comparative on, comparable on in some way, right? It's about, again, transgenderism, not transsexualism, not people actually having gender dysphoria. Gotcha. This is people that just hate their bodies for some reason or feel uncomfortable in their bodies for some reason, whether it's trauma-induced, whether it is because of depression or OCD or an other mental health issue or just because you're a teenage girl hmm. or have been molested. This, in the same way that young girls used to have, like I said, anorexia or bulimia or any other extreme body modifications mm. in that way it's become or emo cutting right. yep that's become trans okay that makes it, that makes sense actually yeah. that's a good point yeah. because it's I've, the new I've, way of, i've of, spoken okay. with a lot of anorexic girls actually i've known a few of them and the one recurring theme whenever Sexual i speak trauma. to them about it it's it's not actually that that i've heard but okay. that's probably one too what i've heard is having control it's mm -hmm. like they they don't feel like they're in control of anything else in their life. But why so do the they one, feel that way? The one thing they want to be in control of is of what goes into their body. But what? But my point is, why do they feel like they're not in control of everything? Every, of, of anything? Well, 
probably because of a trauma of some sort that they made... were probably taken advantage of and they didn't have control. Yeah. So it's a sexual trauma, it, like 99% of the time. That's and the yeah, I guess that's where I'm getting at, not in those yeah. words when I talk about the more uncomfortable conversation. I worked at the Salvation Army for two years. Mm -hmm. We're at a homeless shelter and we used to have this program where we would put people into housing and try and put like get homeless people who would come to us and they'd be sleeping on the floor and we'd be feeding them this sort of thing and then eventually we would try and like get them back into sort of the flow of life right, maybe right. find them a job like a or find program, yeah. yeah exactly yeah, yeah. and then maybe find them um, a house and there was a process that we had to go through where we had to interview them and with homeless people when you get a little bit close to them they don't hold back with their stories they will just tell you they trauma they everything trauma dump. <laughs> trauma dump so hard yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. i just sit with oh, them i can't can't blame them yeah like they don't, you know they probably don't have many friends like yeah i mean the other crazy on the sh not that they're the crazy one but there's a lot of well there's a lot of crazy right. yeah they'll tell you that they're crazy oh, yeah. but um yeah they trauma dump pretty hard it's funny and i'd sit with them a lot and chat with them and that sort of thing and uh with this process we had 55 people who were trying to get houses we had to do this process with every single last one of them was a victim of abuse as a yeah. child every one of them yeah i know i speak from not direct experience i've never been abused but i've dated people that have been and they've never f actually come out and admit it to me but i went i went to therapy because i was dating them mm. and it's textbook like it's, it's very easy to tell if you listen to the nonverbal cues even that they give and it's just a lot of similarities. And and if you look at, because a lot of people, what they'll say with, with the trans stuff, and I I mention this because people, oh, you're obsessed with trans people. No, I'm obsessed with women. And a lot of these people that are victims of this ideology are women or they're, they're kids that are female. The majority of these, of these um, that's what I was gonna say. The majority of people, first of all, the majority of actual transsexual people are males. It's always been that way since the, since the beginning of th this being a thing. Hmm. Um, so why all of a sudden within the last 10 years was a shift? Right. Was there a shift to now all of a sudden all these young women are identifying as transgender? Well, it kind of does make sense because of what you said before about the the eating disorders and emo that's, and how these women that's trauma though that's not actual gender dysphoria oh, okay Very so different. i was i was talking about the more neurotic side of things because mm -hmm. women tend to be a little bit more neurotic and sensitive oh, to negative emotions 100 so. that's why they're victims that's why they're the easily <clears throat> the most easily targeted for this kind of ideology right because not that they're stupid but they're vulnerable they're, they're generally more vulnerable than men they're generally more emotionally easily manipulated than men because they have such more of an emotionally higher IQ hmm. and they want to be accepted generally more than, well, I don't know if say they want to be accepted generally more than men, but they would be more, I think it's, I think they get hurt more when they're not accepted than men. I could be wrong. Yeah. That might be a, a little bit sexist I think sexist social, for me, social ostracization for a woman, I think would be a lot worse. That's what I, that's if you what look, I think. If you that's look what at, I've seen, but I could If you look wrong. at what happens in girls' schools, for example, yeah. I remember my brother's girlfriend when we, when we were teenagers, she had this falling out with the girls from her school and they were just vicious. Like Bad. when uh, the guys at our school would have a fight, we'd have a fight on on and the footy field off. and then, yeah, your, yeah, your yeah. friend's next class. Literally. But girls, it tends it's to be this different. sort of... <laughs> oh, it's, oh, I know, I know. Trust me, I it's war. You know? <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. And yeah. never mind young young kids when they're in like junior high school and high school. Horrible people. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Horrible. I, they need to I was bring terrible. Back bullying in a way. Some, when like, I when I look back at uh, some of the stuff that I did when I was in high school and stuff, I was like, you were literally had no care about anybody but yourself. Like, <laughs> just a bad person when you're younger. A lot of us are. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, you also have to learn to. It's also a time in your life where you're learning to put yourself first, right? Because you're finally entering the real world a little bit. Mm. And you're like, wow, my parents like aren't here all the time for me or whoever takes care of you. And mm. you have to learn to vouch for yourself and stand up for yourself, you know? And the whole, what I was saying, like bring back bullying, meaning like the kids now, not the kids back then. Yeah. The bullying back then was, was bad. The bullying now <clears throat> is happening. Not enough now. Like, I, I there always needs say that. To be, like nobody's yeah. putting these little shits in their place. Yeah, yeah. And they, they need to be bitch slapped every once in a yeah. while. Not maybe literally, but I think definitely young dudes. I can't really speak for young girls because I'm not sure how that works. But for young dudes, like I'm a big proponent of 
like the ego death and humbling experiences yeah. you, because be I had my place. first really significant ego death in, in a boxing gym mm -hmm. when I was 19 or 20 or so. I'd been boxing for a little while. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that I was a pretty tough guy before then, you know, got into some street fights when I was a teenager. I was a pretty bad teenager and mm -hmm. I thought I was tough. Oh, yeah. And then uh, I, I got into the boxing gym. And the first time I actually went into the boxing gym ever, my, my coach uh, was there and he was this Caribbean guy, real sort of tough, like mm. no bullshit sort of guy. Okay. And I walked in and um, he goes to me, have you ever boxed before? And I was like, nah, but I can throw a punch. It's, a, it's the worst thing you can say if you walk into a boxing gym. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'll be like, yeah, fully. He goes, full okay. Shit. I'll catch that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. He goes to me, okay, yeah, go jump on this bag here and show me about these punches you can throw. Right, right, right. And so I got on there and I was this big fat guy and like started <laughs> wailing on this bag. Whoa, I thought I was so tough. And then I turned around and I was expecting him to like give me a compliment or something. And he goes, I don't know who the fuck told you you could throw a punch, but they lied to you. Good for, good for yeah, and he goes, yeah. now go give me a hundred push-ups. <laughs> and I was, yeah, exactly. And I was just like, whoa, like taken aback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then. But you see how that changed you? Like we need, oh, yeah. we need that. And then there's, these kids these days aren't getting it. It's the participation trophy generation, I call it. Oh yeah, big time. You show up and you get a trophy. Like, no, I was on a softball team. We lost every game one season. I was the only good person on the team besides the catcher. Yep. That's not enough. We lost every game. We showed up to like the dinner, like the yearly dinner. And he's like, you don't get trophies. You suck. And we're like, we know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Try to say that to kids now. You need they to have cry. it though. Like They cry and call and, and tell you that you're an evil person. You're a bigot. That uh, they're, if, yeah. if, as, and as a kid, you can get this delusion where you think you're like, all that, you know, like, yeah. and th that the real world hasn't quite humbled you and put you in your place yet. Like right. the first time I ever did a proper sparring session for boxing was maybe six months to a year after I started. And we went down to this gym in East London and this is like rude boy territory i'm the only white boy in the gym mm -hmm. and then there's this other guy and we're, we're sparring together and i get in there and he beats the piss out of me for four rounds and i i was just everything i thought i was beforehand like this tough guy or whatever was was dead in that ring and it died in that ring and i went to, and i went to the toilet and i cried my eyes out and but that was the releasing of it yeah exactly yeah. and i came back out and i was like i am like nothing, you know, and it, but that's necessary for a young man because 100%. otherwise I see some guys take that into their life sometimes thinking that they're the man when they're right. not. And then they get into a, like a boss position at work and they start bullying people and telling 100%. people off. Mm -hmm. And I can always tell the guys who have never had that ego death Definitely. and the guys who have never had that humbling experience. Yep. And I think there's a lot of them coming through the ranks at the moment. Oh, hundred like, percent. I, I, I will also say, I didn't know your dad passed at mm. a young age. My dad did too. Yeah. I was a little older than you. I was 23. And I think that's a very ego uh, reducing experience, if you will, because mm. it's like your your plan, your fallback plan, kind of like the person that's always going to be there for you is gone now. Yeah. And you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like, I got to fix my shit. Like, I got to I got to really figure out what the hell I'm doing. Yeah. And it gave me it chills. Guides you. Yeah, no, I know it yeah. guides. It does. It guides you. It. I didn't know. Maybe that's why we connect so well. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know that about you. Well, I mean, for me, it was. Yeah. Like you said. It's your fallback. It's your hero. It's the person yeah. that you've always looked to as a pillar of strength. And then you kind of get this weird grasp on mortality as well. Yes. And on the fact that people die mm -hmm. and that we've only got this sort of one life. But mm -hmm. yeah, it is a crazy thing. If you enjoyed that reality-based podcast clip, then hit that link below and you'll be able to listen to the entire episode on all major audio platforms. Moreover, Rattlesnake TV members can watch the entire episode on local. So you'll find that link below as well. Rattlesnake TV.locals.com